and let's just go back and hear from the experts once again what's happening with the atmosphere. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at at uh, Chicago here, just maybe you can, now you can just see the top of, uh, of the Sears Tower and if our simulated uh, temperature inversion moves into place, hopefully now you can see all of Pretty much all of yeah, Chicago, see all the lower buildings, including including what's at ground level. So the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes. Again, based on that imagery that I saw, looking 46 miles across versus 0.6 miles across, uh, I really do believe, that just like the experts said, the globalist guys, these these are people who believe in the globe now. They are the ones that said, "Hey, the atmosphere really is acting like a lens," and they put a lens in front of the camera to show how it works. So I'm I'm just doing what they're doing. I'm using the same logic that they're, that they're using, the same science that they're using, and uh, you know, science is all about. Uh, testable, observable, and repeatable data, right? So, uh, to alleviate the problem of distorting the edges because the magnifying glass ring is too small, uh, I went on Amazon and I got these um, uh, plastic magnifying sheets and came up with another way of doing the same thing uh, using the sheet right here. It set the city up, a little cut out of the city, and now I've got the big magnifying glass sheet. Bring the camera right up to the lens. See, that's the normal view of the city. Now let's back up again. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at, at uh, Chicago here, the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes. Atmosphere really is acting like a lens. and. This is how much of the city is missing due to the lensing effect, the magnification uh, of the atmosphere. You're, you're, you're missing you know, a good portion of the city just by pulling my iPhone back on a three foot long desk. That's how much I lost of the city. And as with uh, any scientific experiment, you always try to improve upon what you did before. So uh, I got some foam core, made a little housing for the uh, magnifying sheet and pasted the city on the back there and I made it as two separate pieces so that I could uh, flex it as necessary because I think that there are different types of atmospheric conditions that would al allow for more magnification versus less magnification so in this scenario you have more magnification and in this one you have less and for this one I decided to put the Toronto skyline into my little box here and let's try it again, okay? We're all the way up against the glass. Now let's zoom across the lake. And wow, look at that. The lower portions start to disappear. Now let's zoom back in to get a little closer to the one that uh, Captain Baltard was talking about here. And wow, look at this. Here's his image on the right, and here's my image on the left. Missing lower portions of the city had nothing to do with curvature whatsoever. And this, of course, is my answer to the meme that you've all seen being passed around on Facebook showing the missing part of buildings is absolute proof of the curve. No, not really. Uh, but, okay, here's the part I really wanted to show you guys. I was already in the process of modifying my experiment, so here's what I came up with. I've got my magnifying sheet frame, and I created a, a little stand uh, to paste the sun on it and keep it the same height over the flat surface of a table so the sun is always going to be parallel with the surface and uh, check this out all right here's the first test of a sun moving over a flat surface and with no atmospheric magnification it does what we might expect it would it gets smaller as it goes away from us all right now let's see what happens when we add in our atmospheric magnification again water and refraction. Water causes magnification and refraction, right? So let's bring the sun back. Oh, check this out. Refraction bends the light downward. <laughs> it made the sun set on a parallel surface. As it was moving parallel, the same height, the whole way over a flat surface, the refraction caused the sun to set. Not only that, well, let's uh, bring in the beginning of that little test, and we see that it maintained pretty much the same size, too. Uh, pretty close. Uh, 
And of course, that's because as it's moving away, the magnification is, is still uh, taking place. And so even though the sun's further away than it was in the beginning of the test, uh, the magnification basically preserved the same size and the refraction made it set. Now, I'm just going to put forward a crazy idea for you to think about. And that is, <laughs> if Rob Skiba could figure this out, I'm just I'm I'm just gonna go out on a limb here. I think it it's quite possible that the creator of the cosmos could have figured out the same thing and engineered our beautiful sunsets. Thanks to all that water he placed in our atmosphere. Just something to think about.